Welcome to the American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series. In this commemorative series, past presidents and other leaders of the American Nephrology Nurses Association will provide a rich history of the association itself and of nephrology nursing as a specialty nursing profession. The American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series is brought to you by the Nephrology Nursing Journal, the official journal of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. We are honored to present this episode, and we hope you enjoy these invaluable and enlightening nephrology nursing recollections. Hello, my name is Karen Robbins, and I'm the Associate Editor of the Nephrology Nursing Journal, as well as the past president of ANA. Today, it's my honor to interview Sue Carey, who served as president of a from 2008 to 2009. Sue, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today about a and and nephrology nursing. I'm happy to be here with you, Karen, talking to you. Thank you. And so let's get started about how your nephrology nursing career began. How did you wind up in nephrology nursing? Well, in 1977, I was actually just recently married for about six months, working shift work like a new young nurse, and my husband had a job from 8 to 4, Monday to Friday. And I happened to see in the newspaper an ad for a hemodialysis nurse, not even realizing what that meant. But the good part about it was that they had every Sunday off, and there were no evening or night shifts. So I went ahead and applied and basically fell in love with it and stayed with it ever since. You said your first job was in hemodialysis, and even though you didn't know what it was, it obviously appealed to you as it's been, I gather, the majority of your career. Yes, I started out as a hemodialysis nurse for several years, and I got an opportunity to actually teach at a nursing school, and they wanted someone to teach nephrology. So that was great for me. I taught seniors about nephrology and then cardiac, and they're very closely related, so that worked out. And I was able to take students to the dialysis unit for rotation. And then the medical director, we only had one of the dialysis unit, we only had one in Baton Rouge during those times, asked me if I'd be a consultant to his dialysis unit and set up their education department. So I took on that job also besides teaching. And I taught as an associate professor in nephrology and cardiac for 22 years and was during most of those years a consultant to the dialysis units. The units kept increasing, obviously, over time. And then I became a nurse practitioner in 2000 in nephrology and did that for 16 years before I decided to retire and then went on to be an expert witness doing both plaintiff side but mainly defendant side. And I take on nephrology cases, mainly defending nephrology nurses. Okay, so tell us what was happening in nephrology and nephrology nursing during the time of your presidency, as well as what was happening in ANNA, of course. During that time, The chapters were very active, and I can't remember exactly how many chapters we had, but there were many, and they had a lot of activity going on with the chapters. Also, during that time, we had a focus on basically three areas of practice, hemodialysis, peritoneal, and transplant, but then looking at that as one profession in nephrology nursing. There was also an increased focus on including advanced practice nurses into the organization, and Part of this inclusion, we were starting to offer more pharmacological CEs and with our continuing education programs and also with the national conference. So the conference started offering more pharmacology CEs because advanced practice nurses needed those. We started including them more into the organization, realizing that that field of nephrology really needed these advanced practitioners. So that's just an indication of how responsive a a was to the change in needs of the membership. And which brings me to my next question about the biggest challenge that you faced during your presidency. And certainly the lay of the land was changing while you were president. Can you talk about that, please? There was a lot going on in health policy during those years. The conditions for coverage were finalized in October 2008. Now, I became president in April 2008. And during that time, like ANA does now, they are a member of the Kidney Care Partners. And during 2008, the Kidney Care Partners, collectively, they were giving CMS input into conditions for coverage. And also, they were starting to look at the interpretive guidelines. 
And actually, A and A is cited under the conditions for coverage and interpretive guidelines in Section V715. And this section addresses assessment of hemodialysis patients. And what a lot of people don't realize during that time that CMS initially wanted to put in there physicians and physician extenders. And I remember being called by Gail Wick at that time, who was our representative for Kidney Care Partners, and saying that they were going to vote on this and Kidney Care Partners needed a and a support because we, we were the only nursing organization. And we talked about this uh, point of physician extenders and didn't agree on that being in there. So Gail took it back and really was instrumental in getting the words physician extenders out of there. What they put was physicians and non-physician providers. Then in interpretive guidelines in the same section, they then explain what they meant by non-physician providers, and they put advanced practitioners and clinical nurse specialists and, and physician assistants. And actually, they also then have ANNA cited, like I said, in that section, because ANNA gave recommendations and CMS took the recommendations as they gave them, what should be assessed on a patient for the first hemodialysis treatment in the in center. So the first time they come to the center, what the nurse should assess that first treatment before they go on dialysis. So if you any of the readers have a moment to look at the interpretive guidelines on section B seven one five, you'll see where A and A is cited and that happened during the year of two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Also, during that time, we were really busy with health policy, and we partnered with NKF to develop an assessment tool and the Comprehensive Interdisciplinary Patient Assessment Tool. And I'm sure a lot of the nurses know about this. It was quite a lengthy tool. We tried to bring it down as much as we could to what was essential, but it had a purpose, and that was to help with meeting the conditions for coverage guidelines. That tool is in use still. And it was a joint effort between NKF and ANNA during that time. One other thing I wanted to mention also that during that time, presidents had to have a theme. And my theme at that time was mentoring generations today for tomorrow's leaders. At one point during those years, we actually had a record of having over 12,000 members. So that was quite an accomplishment and exciting times. Well, that was certainly an appropriate theme since that, as I recall, was the 40th anniversary. And to celebrate that new decade, it's about mentoring and looking forward. Exactly. And it was the 40th anniversary. I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I meant to mention that. And yes, it was very exciting that we were 40 years. So what do you think the biggest advancement was for nephrology and nephrology nursing and ANA during your presidency? Certainly the conditions for coverage and trying to wrap our hands around the comprehensive interdisciplinary patient assessment tool were huge. Yes, and then we also had some social media changes. During that time, we were entering into the electronic world. Some of you may remember when we had voting every year that you got a paper ballot that came in the mail, then you had to mail it back. Well, we were successful in getting bylaw changes during that year that the membership voted on to allow for electronic voting instead of the paper ballots. So that was implemented then the following year after my presidency. But the bylaws were changed during my year to be able to implement the electronic voting, which we use now. Also, a and a launched a social networking system that became known as a and a Connected. And this eventually transitioned to what is current, the a and a Open Forum which is quite active. I follow it every day, actually, on my email. So that's an exciting time, how we moved into the electronic world. How has your career been influenced by your participation in ANA? Well, it's interesting. I became a nurse practitioner in nephrology in 2000. During that time, I was the first nurse practitioner in nephrology in Louisiana. And how I was able to do that was honestly through my connections with ANNA and my knowledge of how nurse practitioners in other parts of the United States were working in nephrology. I had a lot of colleagues that I've met through ANNA that were nurse practitioners before I became one. And that really interests me, what they were doing and how they were working collaboratively with physicians and taking care of the patients. So when I went back to school, I already had my master's degree since 1983. And being in education, I had to kind of make a decision whether to go on for my PhD or to do something else. 
and I really am clinically based. I'm a clinical person, and I decided I wanted to be a nurse practitioner in nephrology, but like I said, there were none in Louisiana. So I really had to convince a nephrologist in Baton Rouge what I was capable of doing as a nurse practitioner for them in nephrology, for them and the patients. So as a student, I need a clinical time. So I went to nephrology group, told them that, hey, I'm a nurse practitioner student. I really need clinical time. And they said, but we don't need a nurse practitioner nephrology. We don't know what they can do. And I said, you know, I know nephrology and I'm free health. How about let me do my clinical time with you? And they did. And then by the knowledge of what I had learned from my colleagues in ANNA, I was able then to implement that as a student nurse practitioner in nephrology and show the nephrologist what I was capable of doing in nephrology, what a nurse practitioner could do, and how much that role could be expanded. And after I was done with that and graduated and became certified as a nurse practitioner, they asked me to come and work with them because I actually made my own job. And it was through my knowledge of ANA, of the colleagues that I had there that really helped me form this job. Now there's a lot of nurse practitioners in nephrology in Louisiana, but I was able to be that first one and show them what could be done just because my relationship with ANA and my colleagues there. The networking allowed you to really have some concrete ideas and not be operating in a silo. That is a huge part. And I actually joined ANA when I was a hemodialysis nurse, and I also networked that way. I joined CUAB, a Community Education Approval Board, and got to know people that way. So ANA has been a huge part of my career. And through ANA, I learned a lot about health policy also and how that affects our practice, not just on a national level, on the local level. So that was also a big plus. ANA has been a huge part of my career and helped me guide my career as I went and you know, pointed it in the direction that I truly love. And I don't think I would have been as happy with my career if I hadn't been also a member of ANA and involved with ANA. And it's just over the years, the two go together so well. My career in nephrology and ANA, they're just they, they're hand in hand. I share those experiences with you, Sue. So one final question. Can you give us a brief snapshot of where you see the future of nephrology nursing? Well, I really feel like it's probably going to go toward home therapies especially because of Medicare dollars. And I would probably see maybe the nurses now getting into more involvement of the home visits with nephrology, but just related to nephrology. The other thing I said, increase opportunities for the nurse practitioner. We already have CKD clinics. We have anemia management clinics. They make rounds at the dialysis units. But as it goes more toward home therapies, it's going to take some time, but there might be some more telemedicine going on. As a wearable kidney becomes perfected and you know approved, might be seeing these patients coming to the office or coming into the office of an advanced practice nurse. So basically, that's a snapshot. I kind of see it going more toward home therapies and more independence on the patient side. I've been talking with Sue Carey today, who is president of A&A from 2008 to 2009. Sue, I want to thank you for your time today, but more importantly, I appreciate your service and leadership that you provided to ANA and allowing me to talk with you today. We very much appreciate all you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate you and ANA. Thank you so much. The American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series is brought to you by the Nephrology Nursing Journal, the official journal of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. This series is owned and produced by the American Nephrology Nurses Association. All rights reserved. No portion of this podcast may be used without written permission. For archived episodes of this podcast and to learn more about the American Nephrology Nurses Association, visit the association's website at annanurse.org. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, Stitcher, Tune in Radio, our hosting site Spreaker, and other various podcast delivery services.